Hello! I am super excited to launch our very first episode in our Interview with a Pro series. It's ski season! Woohoo! So I asked Janelle from RaisingLittleRippers.com to give skiing and snowboarding families advice for safe and successful days on the mountain. Let's get to it. I have been following you for years now. Would you take a few minutes to introduce yourself, talk about your background and what it is you do? Sure. My name is Janelle Thomas and I am a full-time ski instructor, also full-time mom of three. I yeah. started this program in 2016 after I'd been teaching skiing for, gosh, at that point it'd been about 20 years. So I thought, you know, what can I do with all of this knowledge I've gained, all of this fun that I have to pass on to families? What can I do with this? I decided why not put it out on the internet? And I started to put it together an educational blog this as an opportunity to introduce families to kind of a rare activity in that it's something that the whole family can do from age two to 90. And, you know, to be able to have an activity that brings us all together, that gets us outdoors, gets us exercise, keeps us healthy, is good for our mental state, and it bonds us, is just something that I'd really like to share with everyone I can. I was curious if you could tell us what you see as some of the biggest challenges parents have on the mountain when they're skiing or snowboarding with their kids, and what you recommend. I think my my best advice for families with younger children, especially if they're just getting started, is be patient and have very realistic expectations. You know, we're introducing kids to these sports at younger and younger ages, and you can't do that and just jump right into it, right? It's baby steps. I think consistency is really key, mm -hmm. but that being said, you know, you can ski very little each season. As long as it's each season, you know, mm -hmm. those skills are going to grow and develop consistency and being able to go day after day after day, even if you're only out there with the kids for an hour or two, just being yeah. every day, yeah. this is what we're doing. Their skills yeah. improve so fast. They really do. Yeah. I would agree that consistency is key. You know, even if it's just a little bit on the hill, it's like every day they kind of pick up where they left off. And yeah. when it comes to a fun activity, even physical activities, I, we don't give them enough credit. Right. They can progress so much faster than adults. It's one of the reasons oh. I always enjoyed teaching children. They're just so much fun. Kids know how to have fun. So consistency and patience are really mm. the two skills that parents need going into an activity like that. And on top of that, you just got to keep it fun. When I started introducing my kids as soon as they could walk, you know, all my kids, I was putting them on skis. But, you know, we were doing 30 minutes out on the hill. This was not a full day event. If anything, it was a full day event just getting all the gear into the car, getting <laughs> up to the mountain, getting into the lodge, getting out on the hill, you know, 30 minutes of ski time, and then we're back in for a snack. Um, so I think, you know, looking at it and having a positive attitude, like this is just an opportunity to spend a day doing a fun activity with my kids, not, hey, I'm going to go ski this many runs today, or we're going to, you know, ski this fresh powder all afternoon. And, you know, having those realistic expectations really keeps it fun for everyone. So for families who are watching, who are eager to get their kids on the mountain, but haven't started yet, what do yeah. you recommend for them to increase their chances of having some great first experiences with their kids? I always recommend introducing your kids to their equipment at home. You know, there's a lot of gear that goes along with this activity and even just getting comfortable wearing a helmet, getting comfortable with goggles, understanding how to work the layers, making sure there's no ski sock bunched up in the ski boot to cause a pressure point. Um, and when we're trying to get dressed and ready and experience all this new gear, either out of the back of the car or in the lodge before we go out, there's so many other variables that can get in the way. And next thing you know, you've got kids that are overheating and parents that are getting frustrated. And so introducing kids to all of the equipment, the clothing, the skis, the boots at home is always a really good idea. And then once you get out on the hill, I always recommend to families start on the flats. I know it's really tempting to either head right up a chairlift or go hit that magic carpet. But there are a lot of really great skills that can be learned on the flats. Skills like just simply slipping and sliding across the hill, rolling from one edge to another, practicing the duck walk, 
practicing the sidestep, learning how to use those skis as if they were our feet and snowboard. You know, we can always do the snowboard too. I generally talk about skiing, but I do snowboard. So I hate to leave the snowboarders out, but especially with skis, it's really important to start on the flat. As a parent, when you're accustomed to the gear and the environment, yeah. You forget that this is a lot for a kid. Like they have a lot of stuff on stiff boots on skis. Yes. It might be windy. It might be cold. It's probably cold. It's a lot of stimulation. All those variables. You throw those all into the mix and you take a child who might be anxious or have some fear and you're just setting them up for um, a disaster. So I like to set the kids up for success. You know, depending on where you live, you can do that in the front or backyard. I've taken young children who didn't have a pass to the base of a trailhead where we just hiked up a little bit, but mostly we were just practicing all of our flat land skills. I think there's the added pressure of the, the money you spent, you mm -hmm. know, which just makes everything feel more stressful for a lot of yeah. people because skiing's so expensive these days. It is. That's another thing to, to consider. Um, luckily, a lot of the resorts do offer a free ticket for kids under the age of six or five. Mm -hmm. If you've purchased an adult ticket and maybe you're lucky to have a season pass, that's always a huge bonus. But if you don't, I always recommend trying to find a resort that has a real great beginner area like a magic carpet, because often you can buy a ticket for just the beginner hill or just the magic yeah. carpet. And it's relatively inexpensive. And then you don't have that stress of, man, I bought this ticket and I'm not going to make it to the summit today. How about a parent who loves to ski and snowboard and they want to share their sport with their child and they've been getting out there, but the child just isn't really loving it yet. It is, it's a value in their family. It's something they're going to keep doing. Yeah. So are there any tips that you have for families to just have a better time if the kids are not really quite as into it as their parent? You have to remember that children change. So offer them some grace and give them time to evolve. I think it's easy as a parent for us to get extra worried that, oh gosh, what's this going to turn out like? Like this can't happen. I need to have a family that wants to go skiing. And so we pressure our children and pressure never works. You know, no one really wants to be pressured into doing anything. So remember that, you know, maybe they're just going through a phase and embrace it and love them for it. And then try to dig into what's really going on because skiing's fun. And really, if a child isn't having fun, there's got to be good reason. And it could be a variety of things. And sometimes it's hard for them to even clue into what that is, depending on their age. My middle child has very high anxiety. And so we did have a few years where I wondered if he would keep skiing and he was getting old enough that we could leave him at home, but I didn't really want to encourage that. I wanted to help him move through his anxiety. So with him, it was a lot of conversation about the night before, what he was concerned about, what he was feeling anxious about. I found that when we would get to the mountain, even if we'd had those conversations and he felt like he was ready to go out and have a good time, things could trigger him like putting on all the gear and something doesn't fit quite right or feel quite right. It could be something as simple as a tag, you know, bugging him that would trigger that anxiety. And next thing you know, he's sweating bullets and pulling off his gear and not ready to go outside. Those were challenging years and we had to slow down. We decided that the best option with him was to really make sure he had choice. So mm -hmm. even though we didn't leave him at home, if he needed to stay in the lodge and take a break, he was old enough to do that. If he decided he was done before we were, he was old enough to do that. And I, I do try to give all kids at all ages choice, you know, mm -hmm. even the really little ones. If we're out on a lesson, it's so important that we're tuning into what's going on with them, where they're at. Are they comfortable? Are they cold? Are they hungry? Are they tired? You know, young kids sometimes have a hard time sharing that information. Choice is, is really important. Nine times out of 10, when we're not having fun doing something as an adult, especially if it's something that should be fun, it's usually because we don't feel we have a choice. We're stuck right. doing it and, or maybe we're afraid and nobody's taking the time to acknowledge our feelings. Right. That's always my two cents when it comes to kids is remembering that they're human beings and they may have something they need to share before what you're doing can really be a positive experience for them. Last year, our little guy he wouldn't let go of my husband's legs like the entire time. It just took so much patience and faith to just be like, it's okay. So this is what skiing is for him this season. Okay. We're going to yeah. be in Lake Tahoe skiing for a few weeks this winter. And oh, 
I've already got the nerves of like, oh my gosh, what if the four-year-old won't let go of daddy again? You guys may get out there this year and he doesn't even remember having done that last year, you know, or he might hop right back into that position, in which case I would encourage you to um, still give him something to hold on to, but extend it away from the body a little, try a ski pole. Okay. Or if you guys have the ability to bring like a hula hoop. That's oh, a fun one because you can put it actually idea. around him, put it around his waist so he can hold the edge of the hula hoop and then dad can hold it from behind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anything you can use to help him kind of move away from physically holding on to dad to, you know, being a little more independent and on his own, but still feeling secure, right? Like feeling yeah. like dad's got his, got a hold of him. Right. Right. Oh, that's such good advice. Talking about ski poles, that's mm -hmm. a big conversation in our family. When is a child ready for ski poles? What do you think? That's such a good conversation. I love this one. I always recommend you not use ski poles until your skier can control their speed by using their turns, not just a wedge. You know, a wedge is a is a great skill, but eventually we got to use and we got to move out of that in order to progress onto, you know, steeper runs where we can still stay in control. So the key to that is moving from using your wedge to control your speed to using your turns to control your speed. If a child is at an age where they're skiing in control and they're using those turns now to control their speed, not just wedge down the hill, then they're probably ready to at least introduce a ski pole. However, there's that final factor, right? Where's their desire? So if your child's super excited, go for it. If your child wants nothing to do with them, don't push it. It's really not a necessary skill. And a lot of people will push ski poles on their kids too soon. And then kids have a tendency to become dependent on them in ways that not productive. For example, maybe sticking them in the snow to try to slow themselves down. Or in the beginning, they're really just holding the poles in the proper position anyways. They're generally not using them for rhythm. They're not skiing double black diamonds or moguls and trying to use them for technique. So it's really a matter of whether or not they're ready to have that extra piece of equipment on their body as they're skiing down the hill. The skills that you're looking for are, can they can control their speed with their turns versus a wedge? Here's a big one. Ski yeah. school or parent as teacher? What do you think? Mm -hmm. So I have a really great blog article that I wrote when I started this back in 2016 um, that talks all about how I think you are your child's best ski instructor. And the reason I wrote that article is because I kept meeting a lot of parents who really felt like their child was at a loss if they put, didn't put them in ski lessons. And I know as an instructor that um, there are good times and good places and appropriate programs to put your kids in that will help them progress. However, especially at those really younger years, and when you're first just introducing a child to skiing, that one-on-one -on -one attention with a parent who knows them, who knows their personality, who knows how to get them excited, you have so many skills that you can bring to the table as a parent that can really make that introduction to skiing a lot more fun. Lessons are a blast for kids who are very social, kids that like to ride with other kids, Kids like my youngest, who is a very visual learner, he learns best by following someone who challenges him. There's so many reasons to pop a child into a lesson. That being said, it can be a waste of money in the beginning. It can also be very stressful to a child who has any sort of fear or anxiety if they're not quite ready. So I think it's important for parents to remember that even if you are just a beginner skier yourself, if you're capable of skiing and control um, and getting up and down, you know, the beginner hill on your own, you have enough skill to at least introduce your children and get them started. It takes a good 30 minutes to 45 minutes for the instructor to really kind of evaluate and get to know each student in their lesson. That's a lot of wasted time. By the time the lesson's over, they're just getting to know your child and just getting started. <laughs> and then they ship them off to you and you take them out skiing anyways. It's really important to consider the fact that 
as an introduction and through those beginner skills that you really are potentially their best instructor and to not have the fear or concern that, you know, they're not going to learn as well or they're not going to progress as quickly um, if you don't pop them into ski school. Ski school, I recommend for opportunities like say you're on a ski vacation and mom and dad want to go take an hour or two to themselves great opportunity to throw your children in a ski lesson where they can go and meet some other kids maybe learn a few skills from the instructor and then go back out with you in the afternoon most of the kids that are in my lessons they're having fun but really when it comes down to it they cannot wait to get back on the hill with mom and dad at the end of the day. Like that's what they're talking about all day long. I know. And if you think about it, you know, a lot of these kids, they spend all week in school if they're not being homeschooled and then they spend the weekend in ski school and they really just want that quality time with their family. So that's just another reason I think don't hesitate to teach your own children um, because it's really about getting out there and spending time together as a family. I started skiing when I was four. And so when I became an instructor, it didn't really have a good sense of what it was like to be a beginner. You know, for for me, skiing was like walking. And so I decided to pick up a snowboard. And that was one of the best things I ever did. Because skiing and snowboarding, really, the only thing they have in common is that they both slide down the ski hill on snow. (laughs) They're two very different sports. And so it put me back in that position of being a beginner again and looking down a beginner run and feeling intimidated. If you're a parent who's been skiing or snowboarding a long time, it is hard to put yourself back in those shoes and remember what that feels like. It's not a bad idea to to switch it up and try to do yeah. something new and learn next to your kids. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea of them seeing you challenge yourself to try something new and be a beginner. Our kids look up to us so much to them. We've never, we've always been good at everything we do. <laughs> right, right. And you know, that's just not realistic. So it's right. one of the things I love about skiing. I think it teaches really great life skills. It's good for the mood and the mind and the body. Yeah. Yeah. And if nothing else, it's really good for bonding relationships. What if a parent also wants to learn how to ski with their kids? Maybe they just move to an area where skiing is, is, is available now, and but they're not skiers and they're feeling intimidated because they don't want to go if they don't know what they're doing. And you just squash that. Like, go, go with your kid yeah. and figure it out together. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. You know, I've met parents who um, they want their kids to have that experience. And so they sign them up for lessons and they sit in the lodge and oh. like, no, 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 no. Yeah. no. And, you know, there are a lot of ski schools that will do family lessons. So that's always an opportunity to, you know, if you want to take a lesson with your children, you can find an instructor that will go out with just your family. It would be a little more expensive. It'd be a private lesson, but they can go out with you and your family. And the great thing about that is if you have a good instructor, not only are they going to um, teach all of you according to your age and ability, but they're also going to give you as a parent some tips for when you're no longer in the lesson. Like, how can you help your kids? How can you become more independent so that, you know, they can depend on you a little more? Um, I think the biggest trick with learning together is managing the chairlift, right? Because as parents, we're trying to figure it out on our own, and we also want to assist our children. So that can be the trickiest part. Again, magic carpets. If you have a ski resort that has a magic carpet, those have been one of the best learning tools ever added to the ski school for sure. And most ski resorts have those open to the public, not just the ski school. For kids who are already proficient skiers, what skills do you think a child needs and what safety knowledge do they need to be able to go off on the mountain by themselves? Oh, that's a big one. So that's really where my focus is right now. As I've spent the last several years working on helping parents as far as progression goes and skills, I found that the conversation often leads to safety and risk management. I'm currently working on creating an app, and that app is going to be filled with fun, gamified micro lessons. And those micro lessons are all about instilling risk management into our young riders. Risk is so valuable, you know, and managing risk is a skill that kids will take off of the ski hill and into real life. Being able to approach an environment that is risky with confidence and the ability to manage it in a way that 
gives you the best chance possible of writing another day is invaluable. And so I'm really excited to be working on this new program because there is a gap between what we expect people to know and them actually knowing it. You know, mountains are getting busier and busier and we're introducing kids to these sports at a younger and younger age. We've got right. two, three, four, and five-year-olds skiing black diamonds and they're skiing around tree wells that could swallow them whole. So yes, as parents, we're there with them and we're helping them manage those risks, but we're not doing them any favors if we're not introducing them to those skills, even at a very young age. I'm very big on acknowledging that even two-year-olds can begin to learn management skills. For example, if they're skiing down the magic carpet and they need to stop, it's so important that they understand that it's much like driving a car down the road. When dad pulled the car over, they don't stop in the middle of the road, right? They right. pull the car over to the side and they park it. When my children were getting to that age where they were asking to go take some runs by themselves, I asked myself that same question, like, are you old enough? Is this legal? <laughs> like, yeah, right. You know, yeah. Like, the way we stand right now as a family is, is you just always ski with a buddy. We don't go anywhere alone. You know, that's a hard one. I've been out on runs on my own on an incredibly great powder day and Everyone in my family was somewhere else. I wanted so bad to go off piste and I just had to remind myself, you know, it's just not worth it. So we're yeah. at Whitefish Mountain Resort in the last several years, I believe a total of four people have passed in tree wells. Even expert skiers end up in tree wells. And if there's no one there to help you out, you're out of luck. 90% of people who have been in a tree well could not rescue themselves. Your, your chances are pretty slim to self-rescue. Choosing to introduce my children to a risky environment comes with a huge responsibility on my part to instill in them the risk management skills that give them the best chance of being able to ride another day. But I'm also not oblivious to the fact that we can't manage all the risks and things can happen. I know there's plenty of people who ski the trees without a ski buddy, but for us, it's just a no-go. You always go out with someone. Okay. So ski with a buddy yeah. is a huge safety tip and number one, number one, any other s specific skills you would want to see in your kid and maybe their sibling or a friend before you're ready to say, okay, you guys can go off by yourself. The first is I want to know that they know the terrain that they're getting into, whether they're familiar with that terrain because they've skied it before, or if we're in a new area, then we would take the time to go over a trail map, plan out where they're going to go, where they're going to end up. Some skills that are really important to have, one specific, is to be able to side slip because if someone gets themselves into terrain that's a little sketchy and they need to get out, the side slip is going to do that for them. I do not recommend people taking off their skis and trying to walk down the hill. It's actually extremely dangerous. Once you start slipping and sliding, you could end up at the bottom of the hill. The other thing I always um, chat with a child about before they ski off with a friend or a buddy is um, where and when we're going to meet. And then I make sure that they have either my contact information and ski patrols information. Yeah. Two of my kids have cell phones. One does not. So, you know, he just carries that information in a pocket. If they have a cell phone, I recommend always just pre-programming the ski patrol number into mm. the contact. It's also really important that kids understand that you don't have a signal everywhere on the mountain. I've never relied on a cell phone. I know a lot of people do, but I don't rely on a cell phone in the mountains because they're just so unpredictable. I wish a company would come out that can create a better communication product for the mountains. There's a, there's a few that I think have potential. So there's one called BB Talkin, and then there's another one called Milo. I think it's called Milo. Okay, Milo. That one looks really interesting too, because that's hands-free. It just kind of like hangs. It's like a little communicator that hangs on you and you can just talk back and forth. I love the idea of these for just like skiing down the hill, even as a family, because we've gotten to a point where we're constantly yelling at each other. And we all ski and ride about the same ability, but 
you get to a point in your skiing where you can just ski and really get a flow going, it's frustrating to stop that flow because someone's yelling at you and trying to get your attention. <laughs> like even when you're teaching your kids and they're up ahead of you and they have their helmets on and they can't hear a word you're right. saying. And you're, I mean, that alone is risky because when you can't communicate properly it causes people to stop in places they wouldn't normally stop or mm -hmm. turn in ways they wouldn't normally turn. But yeah, um, making sure that they have the contact information they need for ski patrol, especially and then also for you in case somebody needs to um, reach out and find you to assist them. Yeah. Well, so where can people find you if they want to follow you, follow along and learn more from you? Where should they go? One of the best places to find information that I'm putting out there is um, on my website, which is raisinglittlerippers.com. I highly recommend you join my newsletter. It is seasonal. Ah. I don't send out information unless it's really relevant and helpful, but I do put a lot of free coaching on there and I share gear reviews and all the good deals that I come across. You know, we've always lived on a budget, a very tight budget. And I know that skiing is such a privilege for us. So yeah. I've gotten really good at figuring out how to do it on a dime. But yeah, so there's uh, raisinglittlerippers.com. Join my newsletter. And then the last would be Instagram. We have a great little community over yeah. on Instagram that is growing every season. And totally. so my goal there is to really connect all those families and feature some of those families so that, you know, other families can see, yeah, you're not alone and kids can see, Hey, look at, there's other little guys mm -hmm. doing it too. I'm moving forward with it every day. I plan on launching it next season. I see this as being a resource that families are accessing at resorts across the nation. I see this as a resource that ski instructors can share with parents. This information is necessary, but isn't easily and ready, readily available. App is something you can actually access on your phone offline. Thank you so much for everything you've said. I've found so much value in this and I'm really excited to get my kids on the mountain. Yay. Yay. So I'm excited for you. Oh, You're going to have so you. much fun and I'll do my snow dance. Hopefully it'll be coming your way. <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you. Thank you.